politics is older than democracy. And politics and democracy are not the same thing. Politics is a power tool. While democracy is the playing field. And today I want us to look at the five political lessons which Governor Anwai Guru should actually learn from the Kitui Governor Charity Ngilo. Because we all know that today, 15th of July, Charity Ngilu was supposed to be impeached. The Earthy Ward representative, Peter Kilonzo, at exactly 10 a.m., was supposed to move an impeachment motion against Charity Ngilu. But that's not going to happen. Because Charity Ngilu played politics according to the way politics is supposed to be played. And the MCS who had actually signed to impeach Governor Ngilu, they were around 40 out of 56 MCS. Most of them went into hiding. Some of them switched off their phones. And that impeachment motion has been postponed. And it's the second time it's been postponed. Only last month, the impeachment motion was supposed to be debated or tabled before the assembly. But Charity Ngilu went to court and the MCS was stopped from proceeding with that impeachment process. So I think very strongly that Anwai Guru, who was successfully impeached without any problem, can learn several lessons from Governor Charity Ngilo. Because impeachment is a political process. And it must be dealt with politically. The grounds for, the grounds for impeachment of Charity Ngilo were almost similar to those of Anwai Guru. According to the Kitui MCS, they are saying Charity Ngilu failed to honor summons by the Senate. So they want to impeach her because of that. They are also saying that she awarded and hired irregularly and lawfully tenders and also hired some staffs and specifically the county secretary. And also they are saying that, uh, that uh, Charity Ngilu must go home because she has failed to obey the two-third gender rule, which even the president has failed to do. So they want Charity Ngilu to go home. And there's a big difference between Charity Ngilu and Anwai Guru. Anwai Guru was voted along these MCS. They come from the same political party. Charity Ngilu comes from a different political party. So most of these MCS belongs to Waipa. So it would have been easier to impeach Charity Ngilu than to impeach Anwai Guru. But Anwai Guru was each still impeached. So what political lessons can Anwai Guru learn from Charity Ngilu? Because all of them are women. Before I, I give you the five political lessons, which I think are very important, let me just make it very clear. Yesterday, I know most of you guys expected a video in the evening. I didn't do that because I was a bit busy. 
but I know there are several things to be discussed. So there is uh, Mike Sonko storming City Hall. That's something we need to look at because Sonko is trying to forcefully get back his office. Will it work? So that's a video we need to work on. So I'll need your opinion on that. Then there is also a guy on this, pla on this platform who is based in the UK and he runs what is called Commonwealth Voter Privileges Rights Association. So David has petitioned for the rights of the voters, Kenyan voters in Commonwealth. He wants them, the rights to be included in the constitution. So I'm supposed to work on that, but not time yet. Then there's another important video which I think we should discuss. The impeachment of MCS, which the president ascended to. I think it's important because I don't understand why MCS should be impeached so easily while we make it very difficult for MPs to be impeached. And also, there's Mudavadi and Atuli factor in Western Kenya. That's another video I'm planning. But what political lessons can Anwai Guru learn from Charity Ngilu? Five. Number one, the first political lesson is that in politics, you must know your enemy. If you compare Ngilu and Anwai Guru, Charity Ngilu knew so well who the enemy was. And she was very clear that the person who fighting her was none other than Kalonzo Musioka. For uh, Anwai Guru, Anwai Guru was not very clear. At some point, his supporters were, were blaming William Ruto. At some point, they were blaming Karanja Kibicho. And remember, in politics, Robert Greene advises us in his 48 laws of power. If you read those laws, law number nine is telling us very clearly that do not offend the wrong person. So probably Anwe Guru offended the wrong person, assuming they were blaming Karanja Kibicho because they suspect Karanja Kibicho to be nursing gubernatorial ambitions. But Karanja Kibicho was not behind that. What, do you, uh, what would you have expect Karanja Kibicho to do? To now support those people. So, knowing the enemy is very critical. And once Charity Ngilu identified Kalonzo Musioka as the enemy, she didn't stop there. She also learned that in a group, because these were MCS from Wiper, in a group, not everybody is bad. There's always, if you have 20 people or 50 people, there's always normally three or four people who are the problem. So Charity Ngilu identified these people and she used the, 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 the law number 42 of the 48 laws of power, which states that you strike the shepherd and the, the sheep will scatter. So Ngilu then identified these troublemakers within this MCS and she identified them. And she dealt with them, probably bribed them, threatened them with the, with the removal or some things like that. And then these guys were the problem. So when they did, they came, these guys switched off their phone, they went into hiding. So this process could not proceed because they lacked now the troublemakers and the numbers. So that's number one, knowing the enemy. The second lesson which Anwe Guru must learn, and probably she has learned it the hard way, is that never put your trust in friends. Roman Green advises us that in law number two. Never put your trust on friends. As a matter of fact, you should use your enemies more. 
Because enemies, you know what they think. Friends, you can't know what they think. So Charity Ngilu went into this knowing so well that she had friends, but she could not put her trust in them. Ano Iguru believed that Uhuru Kenyatta was a friend and that Uhuru Kenyatta was going to support her. Come what, come what, come may. But ultimately, the president just watched this thing unfold because there was the interest. There was the interest. There was Karanja Kibichu factor now in this. Because I've always wondered why this impeachment motion was allowed to proceed up to that stage. So the, the Anwai Guru failed by putting all her trust on friends. Charity Ngilu has friends. Railo Dinga. She didn't put all her trust in Railo Dinga. She went out of her way. So next time in this particular matter, Anwai Guru must start not trusting his, her friends. Number three, the third lesson is deliver, service delivery to win the support. If you compare Charity Ngilu and Anwai Guru, perceptionally, Charity Ngilu had the support of Kenyans. Kenyans are wondering why the Kitui MCS wants to remove, to impeach one of the most hardworking governors we have in this country. They were asking themselves. For Kerinyaga, Anwai Guru, when the news about her impeachment came, Kenyans actually sided with the people of Kerinyaga, the residents of Kerinyaga. The only thing which helped Anwai Guru is that this country is, is too political. So there's a camp which believed she was in BBI and therefore they were supporting her. So the thing is, Anwai Guru has not performed for the people of Kerinyaga. Charity Ngilu has performed. And let me use Robert Green again. In his law number five, he advises us to make sure that we guard our reputation. Because everything depends on reputation. So Anwai Guru destroyed her reputation in NYS. And again, now when this came, people just used, just used that case to nail her. But when she went to, before the Senate, there was really nothing. And personally, I was even asking myself, why were these people taking Anwai Guru before this process when they didn't even have a case? It's all because of reputation. Anwai Guru's reputation was spoiled by the NYS scandal. So that's what is hurting her. Charity Ngilu, you can't link her really to a scandal as things stand today. <laughs> so, service delivery. Let Anwai Guru deliver. People will side with her because of delivery. Not because of any other thing. Number four. Number four. I think it's about consultation. Consult widely. And I've studied Anwai Guru. The main reason why the MCS were trying to actually punish her was not because Anwai Guru has not performed. No. It's also not because Anwai Guru is not doing what they want. No. But I think Anwai Guru has ego. She's not consulting these people. And that's why even after she was impeached, she went to Kirinyaga because those guys were defeated. You know, sometimes in, in war, once you defeat someone, you, you must know when to stop. Anwai Guru went to the ground. And while in the ground, Anwai Guru decided on a very simple thing. To form a committee. Or to form a team. To constitute a team. To help bring them together. And of course, she went for the best from Kirinyaga. But sadly, she never even consulted the people she appointed to that committee. So most of those guys started resigning. One by one, one by one. I'm not sure whether there are some 
which which remained but she later on recalled that list that list so in my view the best thing anwaigul should have done was to consult widely bring the teams together tell the mcs of course you can't convince all of them but amongst the mcs in kirenyaga there are some who voted to impeach her but can be reached out through consultation then once you bring them then you agree now we can do this then let them even own the process let that initiative come from that other side but you know in your heart that is you who has initiated it so just consult widely so consultation is what lacked for charity ngilu she really consulted i am aware when this issue came up charity ngilu met with railo dinga i'm aware charity ngilu discussed this matter with so many other politicians in this country and that's how she was able to get some of these advices remember despite defeating those guys in the court and again now she has not bragged what is going to happen is that charity ngilu has decided to assume that she's working without being distracted while in the background there she's very lethal dealing ruthlessly with this mcs and lastly number 5 checkmate any politician must have people checkmating their opponents and this is what saved charity ngilu charity ngilu learned so well that the mcs are not very clear are, are not very popular some of them almost most of them then she opted now to start dealing with them one by one So you come from this world there is an opponent going down there and because the president has also made it very easy to impeach MCS most of them then started fearing and that's where we are where we are today for Anwar Guru she forgot all this she forgot all this that's the sad reality she failed to identify the trouble makers the thing is in this country people go for an election immediately you, they finish election then they are tied with the elected leaders there's someone somewhere who was rigged out but he's on the ground so anweguru ought to have started working with this team and because she's a governor she has a, the word administrators and the rest so you make them checkmate So if the MCA is is an and the Oshida then work with the word had made bring the developments to their areas and then use those of avenues to paint them black So those are the five political lessons which I think governor Anwar Guru must learn from Charity Ngilo I don't know what you think but that's my take and if you are watching this video for the first time i want you to take a second or two and hit the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this you automatically get notified and to the subscribers i want to continue thank you guys for your continued support yesterday i did not post a video in the evening and my inbox inbox was full 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 to the brim tomorrow i don't even know which one to begin with because there's so much happening in this country and i don't want also to do more i don't want to do three videos i just want to do one or two in a single day thank you guys and wherever you are just remember to keep so social distancing remember to put on your mask and remember to sanitize and if you can please sanitize and wash your hands and if you can avoid crowded places please do that the virus is here with us and is serious pass that message to any other person any other time you get an opportunity thank you guys and please may you have a good day and by the way i'm doing this video at night and i know someone asked me about the lighting you no know, when i start it's, it's you know i have some lights here but they are solar i mean they are rechargeable so after some minutes then they start dimming but very soon i've actually ordered for the ring light 
So hopefully you are going to, to see more clear videos beginning uh, tomorrow. What I've decided is to probably do two videos, but I put one in the morning, another one in the evening. Because most people are complaining that I put videos in the evening. Some wanted me to put in the morning, some wanted me to put in the evening. So I'll put a video in the morning and another one in the evening, every single day if I get time. If you don't see me doing a video in the morning, just know there's a problem somewhere. Probably I'm 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 held up because I'm a human. I'm, I'll not be able to. I'm not able to, to do it. When when I don't put in the evening, like yesterday, just now I was held up doing other things, which, of course, to the benefit of this nation. Thank you guys, and please may you have a good day. Thank you.